Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the first 66 action Ultraman candy toy set. This is the first time Ultraman has been represented in this line, and with so many smaller Godzilla toys, Kaiju fans have been wondering about the quality of these little dudes. So, sit back, relax, and let's take a look to see if these $4 to $5 candy toys are worth adding into your collection. First up for the 66 action Ultraman figures, we have Ultraman himself. And getting right into the details, you may notice right away that Ultraman is more of a gray than he is a shining silver, as some of the promotional pictures would have you to believe, and, well, that is unfortunately true. But, then again, it's a 4 to $5 candy toy, so you can't expect too much. But what is nice, as you can see right here, he has nice translucent yellow eyes, which is pretty cool. Now, looking at the actual paint applications on Ultraman here, you can notice that, well, what little paint application is there... It's pretty nice. You have this nice metallic blue here for the color timer, which is expertly applied, and you can see that all of the red paint on Ultraman is simply within the lines, the sculpt marks to be exact, which is rather impressive. And moving down here, you can see the basic design here for the legs and the feet. But what is rather unfortunate is, aside from a few spots, there really is no paint here on the back of Ultraman which is rather disappointing, but again, for a 4 to $5 toy that you're mostly going to be looking at from the front, it's not that big of a deal. Now, to move on to the articulation, Ultraman's head is not attached in the package. It's in a separate part of the baggie, so you just pop that on, and it is on a ball joint. So you can twist and turn, have them look up, down, left, right, all that fun stuff, which is pretty great. Shoulders are on a ball joint. So you can spin them around. And there's a nice little cutaway here, so this way you can get the arms to go out straight like so. There is a basic bicep swivel. We have a hinge at the elbow. And the wrists are on pegs. So the most you're going to get out of the hand movement would be basic swivels. Goes for both arms there, as you can clearly see. Now, moving down from there, we have a little bit of an ab crunch. Just a little bit. It's enough to twist and turn. It's on a ball joint. You can get them to rock back and forth just a teeny tiny bit, but not too, too much. But still, that's fine enough. Moving down to the hips, the legs are attached on a ball joint. So you can move them around nice and fine enough. The knees are on a hinge. And the feet are attached on a ball joint. But not an overly complicated one, just very simplistic. Pop the feet on, and you're good to go. So, Ultraman's articulation is rather basic, but considering the price point and the division it comes from, that's a pretty great deal. Now, all of the 66 Action Candy Toys come in a little baggie, and you'll have a body, the head, you'll have a runner for the hands, and then you have another one for a stand. So, as you can see here, Ultraman comes with those splayed hands, as I showed you, and it also comes with some karate chopping hands and fists, which are pretty cool, and to break these off, all you have to do is just twist them, or just pull them. They're not attached on too well. And then we get this little display stand here, because you probably saw on the back of Ultraman, there was a little hole. And all you have to do is just pop this off, like so. And all you have to do is just pop it in, like so, and you can angle it back a little bit. And then you just plug this little peg into the back of Ultraman, and there you go. Now you have a display stand. Now, what's cool about this is you have those extra hands that I was showing you earlier. You can just plug the extra hands into the holes on the stand. So this way, you won't lose any of the accessories. And this goes for all of the other 66 action figures, too. And finally, since this is the candy toy division, all of the 66 action Ultraman toys come with a little piece of gum. It's berry flavored, and the flavor doesn't last too long. I've had two pieces, and... Uh, Eh, it's cheap. Number two in the set would be Ultra 7. And getting a good look at Ultra 7 here, you can see that the paint applications on this one, eh, not the best in the world here. You can see that some of the silver doesn't look like it was applied all the way on this arm. But in general, you can see that the markings here on the main body are pretty nice. This bicep looks pretty nice. You have the metallic green paint on the forehead, which is a little sloppy, and some paint slop there, so yeah. I would say this Ultra 7 didn't necessarily pass quality control, but you still gotta hand it to him. Getting the translucent eye parts in there is pretty great. And just like Ultraman, you will notice a trend in that the 66 Action Candy Toys do not have paint 
on the back for the most part. Now moving on to Ultra 7's articulation, first you have the head which is detached in the box which you have to pop on to a ball joint so you can spin the head around and of note Eye Slugger likes to pop off very easily and just to pop it back on you just gotta line up the little spikes on the Ultra Slugger with the head sculpt of Ultra 7. We have the shoulders on a ball joint that also have that little notch in them so this way you can spread the arms out like so. See, Eye Slugger likes to come out very, very easy. We have a bicep swivel, hinge elbow. Once again, the hands are attached on a peg, so just swivels here. The ab crunch, just like Ultraman. A ball joint, but it seems to be a bit more limited on Ultra 7, just to the point where we're only going to get it to swivel back and forth. The legs are attached to the hips on a ball joint. And we have a hinge for the knee, and then once again, a ball joint for the ankles. So you can get a little creative with the ankle posing, but don't expect too, too much out of this little dude. Now, of note, the eye slugger can be placed into Ultra 7's hand, but you got to be super careful with it. And it won't always stay in place, but if that's how you would like to display your Ultra 7, you can do that. And for the accessories, once again, we get the stand that comes with all the 66 action Ultraman figures. And we get two other sets of hands aside from these sort of karate chopping hands here that I have on Ultra 7 right now. We get hands for the Imurium Beam and we get fists. And to use the stand, all you have to do is just plug it right in to the middle of Ultra 7's back. And there you go. Number three in the set would be Ginga Stream. And in general, I really do like the concept that they have here for the little candy toy, but in terms of execution, I, mine's just probably a dud, but it looks a little lacking. For an example, up over here, again, keep in mind it is about a 4 or $5 candy toy, so I'm not expecting a whole lot, but I'm expecting just a little bit better than this. It looks like the construction here on the side of his head wasn't done properly. It kind of looks like he's got some sideburns going on, and you can see on the translucent eye that there is some gray paint which is on it, which is a bit upsetting. And the blue paint on him is pretty nice. It has a nice shiny look to it, very metallic. But in some spots, it doesn't look like they went all the way. And it does look a little clumpy in some spots, specifically with the gray paint. You can see right up here by the top of the thigh. Again, it's sort of nitpicky, giving the price point. But, you know, still, it's something that perfectionists may not necessarily like. But in general, aside from that, I really do like the overall look of the figure. And it really does catch light very well when it's up on the shelf. Especially when you notice the fine details like this little green gem right here in the middle of his head. Now, moving on from there, you can definitely tell that the sculpt is pretty nice. It's pretty solid. And as usual, as you would expect by now, the back has little to no paint. So, moving on from there, we have articulation. The head is not attached to Ginga in the package. So, you pop it on on a ball joint. So, you're going to get lots of movement there. At the shoulders, we have a ball joint with that cut away again, so this way you can stretch the arms out like so. We have a bicep swivel, a little stuck on mine, but that's okay. And we have elbow hinges. And once again, as you should be able to guess, the hands are attached on pegs, so you're only going to get swivels out of the wrist joint. Ginga's ab crunch is again on a ball joint, but it's restricted like Ultra 7, so you're not really gonna get too much forward and back movement, just side to side. The legs are attached to the hips on ball joints. So you're gonna be able to spin them around, move them around like so, like you would expect the ball joint to work. The knees are on a hinge, so you get nice movement there. And then finally, we have the ankles, which are on ball joints. So pretty much as you're able to guess, all of the Ultras in this set feature nearly identical articulation. And last but not least, for Ginga, we get the stand, which comes in two parts, and it's red. And we get chopping hands and splaying hands. And to use the stand, all you have to do is find the hole in Ginga's back and plug it in. You should be very familiar with this by now. But if not, that's okay. And it can be a little rough to get it in, but once you do... You can support Ginga. And last but not least for the entire set, 
ball time. And as you should expect, very simplistic on the paint applications. Once again, we have the translucent parts up here. We have very basic silver paint here on the face, a little bit of silver airbrushing, or more so gray here on the chest, and that's pretty much it. No real paint on the back at all, but you can definitely see the sculpted details, which is pretty nice. And that's that. So in terms of articulation, head on a ball joint, shoulders on a ball joint, with a little bit of a cutaway there, so this way you can raise the arms up evenly. We have a bicep swivel, elbow hinge. Now, for the claws, they do swivel, but as you can see here, there's a little cutaway here, so this way you can bend the elbows. So you have to make sure that that's lined up. So if you do want to use the swivel here, make sure you don't abuse it because you might stress the plastic, so on and so forth. Yeah, just general rule of thumb, make sure that's lined up if you're going to bend the elbows. Now moving on down from there, we have an ab crunch, which is on a ball joint. It's a little flexible, which is pretty nice. Then we have the hips, where the legs are attached to the body. Ball joint. One is rather loose, this one, and uh, the other is rather tight for me. Then we have knee hinges. And then we have ball joints and ankles. It's pretty cool. Now, for accessories, in case you weren't able to tell, Balton doesn't always have these claws opened up. And you get extra claws, or pincers, or whatever you want to technically call them. And sliding them on can be a relative pain, but you just got to keep working on it. And then you'll eventually get it, like so. Also, as with all of the other 66 action Ultraman figures, you get a stand, which just ever so easily fits into the hole in its back. Now, for the critically important question, how tall are these things? Well, here are the 66 action Ultraman figures alongside some of the Bandai America chibi figures. Here alongside some of the Bandai Japan Gashapon figures. And last up, alongside some of the Godzilla Minimates from Diamond Select Toys. So as you can see, the 66 Action Ultraman toys, they are small, but they're on the larger side of smaller toys. So all in all, is the 66 Action Ultraman set worth it? Well, yes and no. Yes, in terms of these are nice little candy toys that you can sneak into your display, and at MSRP, they're pretty cheap. And realistically speaking, they're great. But when you get down to the nitty gritty of it, if you're a perfectionist, you're going to notice a lot of imperfections. And, well, some may just simply not want to spend the money on this. If you've been just thinking about toying with these because you're into other higher end action figures and you're thinking, oh great, I can get smaller versions of Ultra Acts, well, not entirely. If you're interested in the novelty aspect of them, such as collecting a whole bunch of small little toys, then this set is absolutely worth the price. Personally, if you're like me, I like the novelty aspect of them in that they're not necessarily action figures, but they're pretty great display pieces.